greetings and happy new year i'm going to share with you a layout created using the close to my heart spruced up which is in our january february 2020 uh, close to my heart idea book uh, it's the january feature collection and in it um, well the things i'm going to be using there's some wood shapes there are some sort of uh, thick cardboard die cuts there some of the card stocks that come with this paper collection and also the papers i'm going to also pull in some of our other or previous stamp sets that just tie in nicely uh, with this to mess up the background a bit so i really like this kind of burgundy pattern paper the way it sort of makes um, my family stand out from the picture so there's a lot of green in the background of our page and so I with the spruced up does seem to have a lot of green but the burgundy color really helped to lift the photo from the background so I've printed the three photos I'm going to use on the selfie the square one that's on here at the moment the main the bigger one there that was just printed to size on a five by six selfie print the other two I printed um, with the two of them on the one the one photo so they're a little bit smaller they're just sort of like the outtakes or the silly parts of the family photo when people started doing silly things so this photo was taken um, a couple of weeks ago now um, my son was back we were heading away to new year's camp he's been working on my parents farm this summer what we've had of summer anyway and um, my daughter that's in the middle there is heading off to hamilton later this year for a word of life internship so I just really wanted to get a family photo and we took the opportunity with one of the girls friends with us to click the shutter just out in the backyard there and so I've pulled some of the stickers as well as the chipboard and I'm going to sort of layer these up in the background the page while I sort of had the idea of the three photos going into this layer I didn't really know what I was going to do with all these bits and pieces. That's why you sort of see me playing around with the different um, pieces. I decide that the stripes are just too much and decide to use the back of the burgundy paper from Spruced Up that I had used in the front. Um, it, the background was really busy on that uh, on the other side of that paper but it works quite nicely just tucked in behind this photo i decided i quite liked this wood paneling page and i was tempted to use it as the main paper for the background but i decided just to cut this down and it will just be kind of like a frame or um, a border for this wee cluster of photographs um, you'll see here i just sort of um, muck around a little bit with the paper i should have just sliced it all the way through rather than trying to save it perhaps but I'm um, just going to place this on here and it actually would work all right here without anything else done to it. You'll see how I cluster in um, the title and bring in some of these leaves and things from both the die cut shapes and I'm going to get the sticker sheet as well to pull some sticker bits in um, because there's a few more leaves on there that I tie into the page so I'm just trimming these out of the stickers. Trimming your bits and pieces off um, the main big sticker sheets helps you to see what it might look like before you stick anything down. So if you're a bit tentative, or like me, if you're sort of making it up as you go, you can have a go at doing that. It just um, it helps me with placement, thinking about where I want different pieces to go. So again, trimming out some more leaves. I'm going to tuck them in. And I decide that I need a third or another um, of the die cut leaves. It's going to look, stick on there. I really like having the stickers and the die cuts. It adds a little bit of dimension without too much weight on the page. So I'm quite happy with how that looks. And um, I am going to pull, sort of thinking through titles and whether I want to add other bits, looking at some lettering and some other stamps. I've decided I'm going to mess up the background a little bit. I'm going to use stamps to do that rather than paint. It just gives me a little bit more control over the placement of it 
and using the inks and the cardstock means that the paper doesn't get wrinkly like it can sometimes do with watercolors and when I want that effect that's great but right now I don't. So I'm going to just pull all these in and lift them out of the way and I've sort of taken a visual of where that sat on the cardstock, turning the Versamat over so that I've got the foam side which makes for nice um, stamping. Thinking about my colours, I've got an espresso, uh, sage, pewter and I decided I need the mint because um, it sort of fits better with the background, with the lettering and the papers. The, were, the colours in this collection are sangria, fern, New England ivy, julep, espresso, mink, linen and French vanilla. Um, I don't, I think I use some espresso in the stamping, but mainly I use some of the other colours just to bring out some of the colours in the photograph a bit more. So here I'm just using the mint ink and one of the watercolour, I think it's watercolour impressions stamp sets. Um, I love collecting these kind of texture stamps or these um, watercolours or splots or splatters or any of those things because they can be used again and again on so many different pages. So I'm stamping it there with the sage and now I'm going to use some of the pewter which is sort of um, a dark grey pulling that into the background. Now it won't look as gaudy or as obvious as it is right now once I put the pieces on um, and you'll see that come up soon. So here's just another splatter because I didn't want it to look too um, similar so I pulled in a different texture and these little ones are really cool just for those painterly effects or those little splotches to make it look messy and um, I did a bit of second and third generation stamping on those as well just so that they weren't all the dark splatter and just carrying on and I think I used the no, charcoal for that one is there so you can see how it just sort of um, comes in from the background of that paper and it helps to separate the 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 cluster of photos I think from the from the actual background so I've pulled out this other um, stamp set it was a stamp of the month a while ago and it had some quite cool sayings I don't actually think I've used it till now but it just seemed to fit perfectly with this page so I'm going to use the charcoal here with the leaves um, just to place them in sort of prominent places where mostly where the other leaves already sit but I'm going to put one down the bottom to cover the lines that um, my poor stamping skills left behind down there so you'll just see now how that um, it just adds again another little layer or dimension without the weight which I quite enjoy. Now there are a couple of sayings on this stamp set that tie really beautifully with the idea of a family photo um, and I play around with the placement of where to put this one and there's another one I'll pull off soon but I'm just sort of thinking about where my journaling is going to go in relation to the rest of it and how that will fit with the rest of the page. So I end up um, stamping that down the bottom but I decide to hold off on that until I've stuck the pieces down. So I'm just going to use the tape runner here and I'm going to start by putting on the layers of photographs around that central photo. I decided to rough up the edges a little bit um, as this photo is taken sort of out in nature. Uh, roughing up edges or inking edges and things would um, just seem to tie in nicely with this um, uh, the type of page it is. Sometimes you want those neat clean cut lines, other times it actually works well when you've messed it up and with the way the inking is messing up the paper edges fits with that too and so I've got the main picture being stuck onto that big piece and I'm not going to um, put the two little square photos on nicely and evenly they're going to be a little bit uh, messy but as you can see I'm just roughing up the edge of the big piece as well and tucking those photos on so I'm just going to sneak one of them. This one I sneak under one of the um, backing papers that I've got. Now I do three strips on the big one because there is more to it and it needs just a bit more to help it stay in place. So now I get to do the fun bit, placing all the leaves sort of where I tentatively put them earlier. So the stickers are really easy. They're a nice thick sticker so they actually um, hold really nicely and um, 
yeah, they just they're a good firm sticker. They're not flimsy like some stickers can be. So they fit in there beautifully. So I'm going to use the Tombow Green to attach the chipboard shapes just because they're that little bit heavier. Uh, this is a really easy glue. It um, sticks things down really well and it dries clear. So it's quite a good one for this kind of project when you want that scent, that level of permanence. It's quite a cool glue too in that if you put it on something and then let it dry, it becomes a removable adhesive. So if on these leaves, if I'd wanted to be able to reposition them, which I don't, I want them to stay there, um, I could put the glue on the back, can let it dry, and then I can use it and I can put them in different places um, for... I, I haven't tried for how many times but it means that things can be shifted around it can be good if you're wanting to try out an idea first however just placing them worked quite well um, and so I just also use that Tombow glue with the wooden um, bird cut shape and I'm going to put the title the sticker title over the photograph a little bit it just helps with that clustering and bringing it all together into one piece and then again I'm going to put I put the Tombow on the fun for our fun together title um, and because it's chipboard on top of a sticker it just adds another wee dimension to it so I flipped the mat back over even though I'm about to do some more stamping I probably shouldn't have but just thinking about where that's going to go again and I decide to go right back to where the first place was like I normally do. So I am going to use uh, I think it's the black ink I've got in here now because I want this to stand out more from on the page than the um, those sort of smudgy effect ones did and there's also another little stamp on here I think it was cherish the moment that I'm going to stick up the top of this it just felt like it needed something in that little place there but it doesn't dominate it doesn't take over and you only notice that writing up there when you're sort of looking at all the details on the page which um, is quite cool to have something else to go back and look at when you're looking at a page instead of it just being um, all right there in front of you it's just those little details the little things that are in there so looking at this it feels kind of ready and so I'm going to add my journaling in about when the photo was taken, how we had the opportunity to take it and even where it was taken. So it's out by our mulberry tree in the backyard. Um, I'm not sure if you know the old folk song, Here We Go Around the Mulberry Bush, but it um, we actually have a mulberry bush. It's kind of a really big tree, but the mulberries are so delicious and juicy. When you've been out there picking them, it almost looks like you've got blood all over your hands. It's that thick red juiciness, but they're super sweet and super tasty. So there's no fruit there at the moment, um, but it's a nice lush green tree that we were able to stand in front of. So there's my journaling, and I thought I was done, but I decided I needed to add some bling. So here we go. I've got some of the gems and I've got some gold gems as well as silver and I also found some of the sort of green from a previous kit that tied in nicely to the colours in this page and I added a bit of navy uh, to match both mine and my husband's clothing as well as sort of the jeans that all of us seem to be wearing in the photo. So placing these I'm kind of thinking triangular as I put them down um, but I'm not I'm trying not to overthink it as well just looking for little gaps where I think it could work and tucking them in I decide to tuck some too just so that they're peeking out from the papers and peeking under um, the photographs so just placing them fairly randomly fairly haphazardly but there is an element of design in the way I'm sort of thinking of the three cluster areas so that's where the title is where the florals are to the side and down the bottom where I did that where I stamped the leaf and did that um, other journaling down in there so here we go last little dots to tie into the picture and then some nice close-up details so you can see where I've sort of put those um, thank you for watching. I'm hoping to produce one of these each month before the 15th of the month with feature collections. Um, if you don't have a consultant, head to my online shop.